This video is actually pretty informational when it comes to the Boletus rexivarius, the spring king or the spring porcini. We have a lot of info in there about that, but it also features um, families out with kids and spending a day in the woods and what that can look like with maybe some helpful hints if you want to get your kids and your family out in the forest looking for mushrooms that might be a little hesitant with that. There you go. Why, why do mushrooms turn frozen sometimes? Why do they turn frozen sometimes? Well, did you know in the mushroom, most of the mushroom is full of water. All their cells absorb tons of water. That's how they grow. So when the temperature gets really low, it's easy for the mushrooms to freeze and they freeze solid sometimes. Wow. Mm -hmm. We're all families here. This is what makes me excited. So just so you know, when I talk, if the kids are like talking whatever over me or they have to run off and go to the bathroom or they have a fit because they're tired and they start screaming, don't worry. I'm used to that. I have a three and I have a five year old. So don't think that I'm going to think it's weird. I'm just going to keep talking. All right. And whoever can listen can listen. That's great. We really are going to try and make this as kid friendly as possible today. And I'm really excited about that. I didn't get started mushroom hunting until after college. Uh, and so for me, it was something thing I learned once I was older uh, and I am excited to be raising my kids knowing you know a little more about the woods a little more about mushrooms so I think it's great that you guys have your families out here and get to do this when we find the mushrooms it's going to be important at first we're not going to pick them at all okay we're actually just going to let them stay and we're going to look at them so everybody gets the chance to see what they look like growing out of the ground and when it comes to the mushrooms that we can eat the mushroom that's growing right now that we can eat is called the porcini or sometimes called the spring king. So geographically, we're really close to Mount Adams. We're about at 3,000, or are we a little above that? Right at 3,000, thank you cameraman. So about 3,000 feet in elevation. And elevation does play a role when you're trying to find the spring mushrooms because you want to try and chase the spring at just the right amount of time. I am going to talk about later some of the tree species that are in here and show you some ID characteristics so that'll give you an idea. Where we are on the mountain um, is kind of the middle vein of where the really wet moist forest starts to meet the dry side, which is why we're going to get a a mix of these firs and a mix of ponderosa pine as well which is really key for spring porcini plus the time that porcini come out is kind of the trademark of like spring turning to summer even though they're the spring porcini or the spring kings it's really not until you're at that crux of spring turning to summer when they start to come out so it's always going to be a little bit dry and which is sometimes discouraging as you go out you're like crunchy 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 i'm not going to find any mushrooms here but that's when that's really key for when the porcini start to come out if you pick a mushroom there's two things that you can do with it one is you can put it in your basket and the other thing is put it right back where you found it those are the two things you can do you don't ever put a mushroom in your pocket take it home for later don't do that it'll be really gross uh, you don't want to hide the mushroom in your mom or dad's bag you don't want to do that it always either goes in your basket or back where you found it. And it definitely never goes in your mouth, okay? The only time you ever eat mushrooms is if somebody cooks them for you and makes like a dinner or something like that out of the mushrooms. Hopefully we'll find some good, interesting, weird things. I like weird things. And hopefully we'll also help the parents learn a little bit of like, how do you recreate this environment and go out and find some of these spring kings, these porcini in the future? And what's your name? Tristan. Your name's Tristan. Nice to meet you. Excellent. Why don't we continue? Hi, Olivia. Hi, Olivia. Have you been mushroom hunting before? Uh, no, here. Did you see it? What is that doing? That's the spores. So mushrooms, instead of having seeds, they have spores. There's all little bugs on here. So this is the violet crown cup. So this mushroom starts like a little ball and then it cracks open, looking like a crown a little bit. 
And on the inside is where all the spores come from. So when I blew into the mushroom, the spores say, oh, the wind's there. We better get out of here so we can go right on the wind. And then they go shoot out. Spores are really important in knowing how to ID your mushrooms. So we'll talk about that a little more later. But also, guys, if you're finding violet crown cup that's about this mature, where it's fully open like this, then you're in the porcini time of year. So just keep that in mind. So we'll let this guy, actually I'll put it in my basket. We'll take it with us, collect it. This isn't one that's really great to eat. I had a friend who uh, tried eating it once. It's not poisonous, but she said it tastes like pencil erasers. <laughs> so not very good. Wait, did she actually try a eraser before? <laughs> she must have she well, must have chewed on her eraser. I'll have to ask her about that. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick this edible? mushroom. Whoa. So I'm just going to open this up. You see when it's at that point? Mm -hmm. Too much bugs, guys. Okay, I'm going to gift this one back to the woods. Bye, mushroom. Thanks for playing. Here, let's look at this one here, though. Here we go. So let's talk about what this mushroom looks like. What, does, what color does it have on top? Uh, brown. brown. All right. And what color does the stem look like to you? Uh, Yellow. 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 White is, white is yellowish brown. Yeah, white is yellowish brown. You are just like a field guide, but that's perfect. Uh, um, and what is the under? On the top and there's some white on the bottom. Yeah, and this, do you guys want to touch this part? It feels a little spongy. Uh-huh. So it feels a little bit like a sponge. If I had to land do you guys want to touch it? Like it's okay, you don't have to. I love it. <laughs> you love it? <laughs> you want to touch it? So if you guys will notice, um, if you've never found a porcini before, You'll notice it has a pore surface on this side and it doesn't have gills. We'll, we'll get a mushroom that has gills and we'll compare and contrast later. Uh, and as, so as we find more mushrooms, guys, we want to find more of these. These are the spring kings. These are the, the lovely, delicious ones. Um, but we'll keep an eye out for more of these. I have to teach you about a very special word, okay? It's called a shrump. Do you know what a shrump is? No. Nope. It's a mix of the words mushroom and bump. And it's where sometimes in the ground, you'll see the dirt kind of coming up out of the ground. And if you see the dirt coming up, you move it away. Sometimes there's a mushroom deep down inside there. And sometimes it's gonna be these porcini. So if you start seeing those mushroom bumps, maybe stop and look and see if there's a mushroom inside. Sound good? All right. Got in my bag. Oh, is there like a couple nestled in there? Yeah. Cool. Grab them. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, they're too much. That's a little mushroom. <gasps> look. So look at the bottom of this. It has spongy little pores on the bottom too. It's the same kind of mushroom. It's actually not the same but it has that same spongy pore layer. So that's really important to know that when you look at your mushrooms, there's all sorts of details you have to look at. Even if maybe two or three of the things are the same, you need to look at all the other parts to make sure they match. Because this size is much, much smaller, but also it has this special little piece of tissue on the stem what? right there. Sometimes that's called a skirt, a little skirt on it. And the king, oh, uh, the spring kings, they're never gonna have any skirts on them. So that's one thing you need to keep track of. Uh, a big lump of mushroom. I think we should do it two hands. First, you get all the dirt away like that. Do you see right there on this stem? Yeah. It looks like a little net. You know, put it back in the sun. Spores. There you go. So I want you to say reticulation. Reticulation. Oh yes, very good. Reticulation. Let's do this. Ah! Ooh, is that cool? You want to touch it? All right. So every kid needs to hold one of these kinds. These are actually Douglas fir cones. And so parents, telling apart Douglas fir compared to grand fir is gonna get you to your porcini. 
The grand fur are the ones that really, um, that really associate mostly with the spring porcini. But telling grand fur away apart from Douglas fur can be really challenging. They look very similar. Um, so the Douglas fur cones are these ones with the little tassels on them with the little mouse booties poking out. And they're usually very easy to find on the forest floor. The Douglas fur just kind of drop them all over the place. So it's easy to tell if you're in an area of Douglas fur. However, with the grand fur, they don't release their cones onto the ground like, like the way the Douglas fir do. Their cones kind of sit upright on the tree and then they just like break apart and waft away in the wind. So you're not going to just find them sitting on the ground. See how they're shaped uh, quite differently. They're very compact. And there you go. Uh, and then the other way to tell, the next step to tell them apart is going to be looking at their needles. Uh, the needles of the Douglas fir, uh, here are the branches. You'll see it has this central branch and it has needles coming out from all different angles. So try and think about like a pipe cleaner. A pipe cleaner has bristles that come out from every single angle. Whereas the grand fir has needles that come out in a very flat pattern. You see just side to side. There we go, compare the two of them. So it's really easy to tell on really young trees as you're looking at them. We have a lot of really young grand firs in here and we have a lot of really mature Douglas firs in this area. The, the spring kings, the porcini, associate with this grand fir. Uh, so that's gonna be important to know that way. If you're going around uh, even later in the year, you know, in the winter or in the fall, if you're out and you notice all of a sudden you're around a bunch of grand fir, you know that that's an area you're gonna wanna go back for those porcini uh, in the springtime. Uh, also, I mentioned this uh, tree earlier today, and it's the ponderosa, uh, ponderosa pine that we have here. Their, their cones are pretty obvious, uh, especially if you pick them up. They're really spiny and they hurt. Um, and then they have these very different pom-pom looking bristles on them. And if you look real close, you'll notice it has little groups of three that the bristles come off of. Now, to find the porcini, I find if I am in an area that has a mix of Douglas fir, grand fir, and ponderosa pine, it seems to be the right kind of temperature and right zone for those porcini to be coming out. While they associate with the grand fir, the other factors are kind of what create the environment that's most conducive to those mushrooms. So repeating that and finding those types of places. Now the grand fir as well as the spring porcini generally are a mountain species. So you're not gonna find them really anywhere uh, low in the valleys. Um, usually 1500 feet up to about 5,000 is where you're gonna find them. They don't start coming out until it's the tail end of morel season. So the morels are kind of winding down um, in an area. And if you've maybe found a really great patch of mountain morels that are near the Grand Fur, go back another two weeks and you could have your porcini coming out. Um, that's especially important because there's a specific type of morel, Morchella snideri, that does also specifically interact with the Grand Fur. And that type of morale comes back in the same area year after year. And you know how hard it is to find morales around here sometimes. So if you can find a species that comes back year after year, plus it also can turn into a porcini patch. Keep it secret, keep it safe, right? Don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, but it's definitely worth knowing those kinds of things. So knowing um, a little bit about the trees can really help hone in with these spring porcini. Now the fall is gonna be different. It's not gonna be the same associations. In fact, the porcini that come out in the fall, there's a whole coastal thing that goes on. They come up almost out of the sand and you can find them up high at elevations and mountains. So you have a wide range and a wide variety of trees that you can find those. The spring is a little harder. Um, because you do want to find them when they're younger. As you guys have noticed, the larger they get, the quicker those bugs get to them. So finding them when they're small is really important. So if you'll notice, we do have a couple of other types of mushrooms that are out here. All these mushrooms are important to pay attention to because we're finding them in conjunction with our porcini. We're finding them at the same time of year. So taking note of about how big the coral or the romeria is and also the violet crown cup 
those kinds of factors will help you know, okay, the area is ready for Puccini. If you're in an area and you're finding a bunch of this violet crown cup, it's still all really enclosed. It might be too early and you're not seeing any mature ones. Or if you're not seeing any Romeria or maybe just one or two barely poking out of the ground, again, might be too early. So all these other seasonal factors, like what other things have you noticed? You notice the columbine uh, that's coming out, those beautiful red flowers that are right over that way. Those are something that usually I see the same time as porcini. Oh, perfect. What's on the bottom of your mushroom? Do you know what those are called? No. Looks like fun. Gills. Perfect. And what do the porcini have on the bottom of them? A sponge. Like a sponge, or you can call them pores if you want too. A sponge. Perfect. So if you find a mushroom that looks almost just like this porcini, but it has gills on the bottom, is it a porcini? No. Nope. It's no. not. All the different parts have to match. Now, do you notice something about this porcini? The underside is just barely, barely yellow. It's almost white, right? Yeah, because so, it's a baby. One. Exactly. So as the porcinis get older, that's when they start turning more of this yellow hint of slight, even there's a little green on it maybe. They start maturing like that. So sometimes the mushroom's age makes it look different. Just like you guys, you don't look the same you did when you were a baby. for sticking it out until the end along with those kids. It can be a little exhausting sometimes with them, but a lot of fun. Um, I just wanna say also, thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for sharing them. Please continue to share them. Also, liking the video helps. If you get the bell on, then you know exactly when we get a video out and it gives you a little announcement. And what else? I don't know. Oh, if you're not subscribed, you should do that. Especially if you watch this entire video, you should subscribe. And I think that's it. I hope that you go out and maybe you find some porcini or you're inspired to bring some kiddos out and have a cool nature experience with them. Thanks guys.